hi guys welcome back to the big sew along i'm jenny and as always i thank you very much for choosing to spend a little time with me this week is week three of our three week long uh series on working with tina gibbons patterns the first week we talked about set in sleeve garments the second week was grown on sleeve garments and this week we're talking about pants um a lot of the tips in the other two videos you could use for just about any garment um this video these the tips i have for you in terms of the pants are really going to be more specific to tina gibbons garments so if you've been following along with this series so far you will have noticed that one of the things we talk about often um and this is this is true for any pattern but it is especially true for log and look or oversized patterns and that is ease and pants are no exception the only way you're going to really know how much ease you like in a pant or in any garment is to measure one that you have that you like um, in an effort to make this a little bit easier for you i know that not everybody has a pair of oversized drop crotch pants and that's really what tina's pants are uh, none of the Tina Gibbons pants are fitted pants. They are all have a drop crotch to some degree and they are all oversized. So I thought I would give you a real quick uh, view of me in a few different pants with different, um, different amounts of ease. So we're going to start with this one. <clears throat> My hips are 40 inches. This pant here is the closet core and I think it's called the Fiore pant. I will, I'll look it up and link it for you in the notes. Um, this pant here has two inches of ease. So it measures 42 inches from si in circumference at the hips, at the widest part of the hips. The next pair I have for you is this one is a free pattern from fabricstore.com. And I think it's called, it is called, uh, the Morocco crop pant. This pant has um, a, a hip circumference of 44 inches and on me that is four inches of ease this next one here is the LV textiles sorry LV textiles of free mantle pants and this one is measures 46 inches around the hips so that would be six inches of ease and then this last one here is a very old pair of plinkas. Um, so excuse the condition. They've been folded up in my closet for ages. Um, and this measures 48 inches around the hips. And so that is eight inches of ease on me. Obviously, these are all going to look different based on the fabric you, you use. You could see in that free mantle. Um, that that's a much stiffer fabric than the other pants that I have. But just so you get an idea what different amounts of ease look like, that's what we're talking about. So a drop crotch pant, and I'll go over this again in the tutorial here in just a second. Uh, for me, I like an ease in a loose pant to be between 48 and 50 inches in circumference at the widest part. That means it has between eight and 10 inches of ease in the hips. Um, also, most pants that I wear that have a drop crotch, for a slight drop crotch, which is what most of these are, I'm looking for something about three inches lower than my usual crotch length. It's a little bit hard to tell because most of these pants are the same on, they have the same length from the front, from the top to the crotch point in the front and the back. Whereas in a traditional pant, the back crotch is going to be longer than the front. But just as a general rule, I'm looking for about three inches of extra length in that crotch. Okay, with that information in mind, let's go ahead and take a look at this tutorial and figure out how to pick our pattern size and how to make some slight adjustments to it. Okay, so now we know how much ease we want in our pants. I'm going to show you on this. This is the Jacqueline, uh, which is cut very similarly to the uh, Plinka and many other Tina Gibbons patterns. Um, I have decided I want my pants to have eight inches of ease. So my hip measurement is 40 
40 plus 8 is 48. I'm going to divide that by 4, and that gives me 12 inches exactly. But I also need a seam allowance on this. So I'm just going to start by measuring this. This edge here is cut on the fold. And I'm going to measure over to wherever it looks like I'm going to get 12 inches. So 12 inches on here is between the extra small and the small. If I add 5 eighths of an inch, I'm pretty much, I'm close to the medium. So I am going to cut the medium. So the thing here is just, at this point, just focus on the width and how much ease you want. Go with the pattern piece, the pattern size, it's gonna give you the closest to that when it's finished. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and cut this out. Okay, so I've cut my pattern out and I've marked my seam allowance here and you can see that this does in fact measure 12 inches. So the circumference of my pants should be 48 inches, which is exactly what I want. Now let's talk about this crotch situation because it's very long. So the way I'm gonna do this is I'm going to measure the crotch in my old plinkas and see what that measurement is. And the way I'm going to do that, I'm going to measure right from the top of the waistband all the way around the curve on the seam line to my center uh, crotch seam. And on this one, That comes out at right about 18 inches. So that's what I want this measurement to be at the seam allowance. I'm just going to write that down before I forget. I recognize that not everybody has a pair of plinkas to measure. So I have brought a pair of pants that actually fit me regularly. Uh, these are the Closet Core Fiore pants, and they only have um, two inches of ease. Now, I am not going to measure, this obviously is going to have a different front crotch measurement than a back crotch measurement. I'm going to go with the back crotch measurement because I want the longest measurement, okay? So we're just going to measure again from the top, measure right along the seam allowance. And this measurement is about 15 inches. So that means that my drop crotch length measurement needs to be about three inches longer than the crotch on a regular pair of pants. So let's go ahead and measure this. And don't forget, we're going to stop measuring at our inseam seam allowance, which is right here. And we're going to start measuring at the top of our waistband, which is right here. Okay, so let's give this a measure and see what we come up with. So this one measures 19 inches, which is about an inch longer than I want it to be. So in my case, because this is cut straight, the easiest way to make an adjustment to this length is just to add or subtract from the top. It's all in a straight line, so it doesn't matter. You don't have to do it in the middle or anything, just do it right at the top. So I'm going to take an inch off of my top. And now we're going to measure the total length of our pant. My original pant is about 32 inches and it was a little shorter than I want this one to be. So let's measure this. Um, our waistband is going to be right about here. And that measures, I cut mine a little longer. So mine is actually almost at 35 inches. And that is fine for me. Now, if you need to add to the length, obviously you're going to want to add under the crotch. Um, same thing for subtracting. And because most of these do have a little bit of a taper here, I recommend just cutting any place between the hem and the crotch and doing your changes there. I'm going to leave these alone for now. 
all the stuff you do at the bottom is just details like pleats or um, elastic or uh, darts, all kinds of stuff like that. But we're not going to deal with that today. We're just going to deal with the overall fit. So the other thing that a lot of people have problems with is if this is going to measure 48 inches, that means I'm going to have more than eight inches of fabric gathered up around my waist. And that is a problem for a lot of people. So let's talk about how we can solve that. We have a very long crotch here, so we don't really have to worry about it getting too tight in the hips. What you can do, the easiest thing to do, is to knock off, say, let's get that kind of straight, an inch right here at the center front. And you would just taper that in, whoops, taper that out to your crotch line. However, because most of these pants have a fold over waistband, you want the waistband to be straight. So what I would do is literally just fold this over on that one inch line or wherever the top of, fold it over at the top of your waistband, wherever you're going to put that. And I'm not doing it very accurately here, but you will want to measure that and make sure it's correct. And then you can measure an inch is right here. This part you're going to want to cut straight and then you're going to want to curve this in. This is the wrong curvy ruler. This hip curve is much better for this because it's got a more gradual curve. So I'm going to measure from here, from the bottom, oops, sorry, from here, the bottom of my waistband and I'm going to curve out from there until I get to my crotch. So it would look something like that okay and then by doing that remember you've lost four inches because this comes off of both front pieces and both back pieces now if that is not enough it's also very easy to do the same thing over here on the side by making a dart and you would just do this your dart is going to go straight for that whole point and then you're just going to taper it out from the bottom of your waistband to the side until it looks like it curves in nicely so you don't have a point. Alternatively, you could do the same dart situation and do it in the middle of your pant. Uh, but I would just do it probably in the center back. You can do a pleat in the front if you want. I have done that before. This pair, in fact, I think has, they're very wrinkly because I've not worn these for a long time. These have um, a pleat right in the center front. It's a little box pleat. And that box pleat, it's about a half an inch. So I probably used a full inch in my dart there. All right, you guys, I hope that's helpful in terms of how to um, work with some of these pant patterns. Okay, so that is just about all I know about working with Tina Gibbons patterns. Um, I have these three videos plus a bunch of other Tina Gibbons videos here on my YouTube channel and I have them all in a Tina Gibbons playlist which I will link for you below. Next week we will not be really talking about Tina Gibbons patterns in particular but we will be starting to talk about embellishments. And I hope you will all come back and see me then because I think we're going to start with a really special one. Um, also, let me just say that I think that will be next week. I have had a real humdinger of a week with this um, kitchen renovation this week. So uh, assuming that things go smoothly this week, I will be here again on Sunday. And if things don't go smoothly, then it'll be two weeks from today instead of a week from today. All right, you guys, I really genuinely hope that you have found this helpful. Please let me know if you have any additional uh, questions or comments. I always love to hear from you. And until next time, I wish you all happy sewing.